Hey guys, it's bro you whack. So I already know there's gonna be some people that look at the title of this video and already start running to the comments section getting ready to type their comments. So let me just take a wild guess at what you're getting ready to type. <coughs> no, this is the worst competitive season because I lost SR. Oh my god, what did I win? So by the time I'm recording this video, season 22 is going to be ending in a couple of days, which I gotta admit, this end date snuck up on me. Like it just seemed like yesterday season 22 just came into play, and now all of a sudden season 23 is happening. like, what, 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 am I just getting old? Like is time flying by faster and faster each and every single day that my crippling depression is engulfing me? But out of all the competitive seasons, not even in just recent memory, but overall in the grand scheme of competitive seasons, was season 22? the greatest competitive season that we have ever seen. Now again, I understand that when it comes to bringing up that question, it is completely subjective because people are going to have their own experience with each and every single competitive season. I want to throw all that out the window. I want to throw all your emotions, which I know you have a lot of. I want to throw every single biasness that you have towards this competitive season into the trash can and really look at what Blizzard has done for this specific competitive season. Because again, out of all the competitive seasons, I feel like this has been the one that has seen the most changes and dare I even say most good changes in competitive Just think of it in a two month span or more or less like a two and a half month span because the changes that we saw in this season took place Also in season 21 we saw changes to the hero band system where beforehand it was a mess Like whether you liked hero bands or not you gotta agree that hero bands were all over the place Because at first they were randomly banning heroes and then they were banning heroes from the percentage of how much they were played at the highest level and then they changed to where only grandmasters and masters were to see hero bands and then soon enough going into season 22 they just got rid of hero bands indefinitely so from the experiment that they ran with hero bands the large majority of overwatch players just didn't like it so getting rid of it indefinitely was a good thing going into season 22 again there are some people that really did like it but when the large majority of players just hate it it's going to be a good change when it comes to competitive but that was an initial change due to results from an experiment that took place before competitive season Season. What about during the competitive season? Well here we can point to the constant hero changes that we saw not only during season 22 But precursor to that because everything that led up to this current competitive season can help vouch for it to be one of the best Competitive seasons because remember the time where Mei was constantly getting nerfed and that's because well She was at the number one spot So we're trying to bring her down to that zero point if you guys don't know my theory when it comes to hero balancing I always say that you want to nerf a hero down to the zero point or buff a hero to the zero point. You don't want to nerf a hero down to the ground, but you don't want to buff a hero to the point where they become an OP hero so that you got to reverse everything that you do. That zero point is a happy medium where every hero is in balance. That is literally what balance means. It's like a zero point. It's like on a zero horizontal axis. And they did that. They nerfed a powerful hero like Mei to the zero point and they started to buff heroes like Ash and Genji who weren't necessarily at the zero point, but were kind of below that zero point even before season 20. And then when season 22 happened in the month of May, we saw that exact same thing again. Heroes like Bastion, Junkrat, and Zenyatta, who were under that zero point, received a slight buff to make them a tiny bit better. And then another change happened in June, where Echo got nerfed, who I always said was going to be a powerful hero, and guess what happened? She became a powerful hero, and then her beam got nerfed, but then another Genji buff came, and then a Hanzo buff came? Okay, yeah, maybe season 22 is the worst competitive season. <laughs> All jokes aside though, we saw nerfs to heroes that definitely deserved it, but we also saw buff to heroes that we probably wouldn't have thought of because we're so fixated on what are the powerful heroes. I'm starting to see a little bit more variety of heroes being chosen in competitive. A hero like Mei that was probably the number one option a couple of months ago is still a good hero to run. Even though someone like me who has muscle memory invested in this hero that has their own personal gripe with her, it's still a good option. Soldiers Henry 6, a slight buff to his Helix Rocket, now makes him a considerably even better pick, probably the first time in forever. Ash is running a lot more rampant than I would like to admit, but because of the recent buffs, now she's a great option. Genji received the most buffs probably in the recent patch notes, and it's paying off because now he's slowly making his way to the top. Echo's still a great option, Tracer is now considered because Genji's powerful, and now Dive is possibly making its way back as a viable comp. Let's talk about tanks. Reinhardt and Zarya made its way back into the duo number one comp, but you also
also have Double Shield that is still a great option, Arisen and Sigma. But now with Dive possibly being a, a, a somewhat good comp, I'm not saying it is the best comp, but now Winston and D.Va might have their own purpose. Or maybe Hammond can replace D.Va possibly, who's to say? But then take a look at the support heroes. If you're running Double Shield, Batiste is probably the go-to because everybody's stationary around the Double Shield. But if you're going to be running a Pharmacy combo, obviously you have to run a Mercy, but you need somebody to heal all these big beefy tanks. You're probably going to play an Ana because she can heal heroes from far away while keeping herself safe, but if your aim sucks like me, then you can easily go to Mora because she's just as good of a healer, if not maybe even uh, better. But if you're running Dive, then you're probably going to want to play a Lucio. Look at what I just said in that two minute span. Look at all the heroes that I just listed. I probably listed 15, 16, maybe even more. I lost count. Remember a year ago? Remember the GOAT composition? There was maybe seven heroes. Definitely six heroes. A Zarya, a D.Va, a Reinhardt, a Zenyatta, a Lucio, and a Brigida. Maybe you can substitute the Zenyatta for him more, but those were the heroes. Everybody knew it. Here, nobody really can agree who is the best hero, the number one hero, the best composition to run. Maybe it is a Zarya and a Reinhardt. Doesn't mean Double Shield can't still be viable. Maybe McCree is one of the best DPS heroes, but Hanzo and Widow are just as good, if not better, from long distances. This is what I like so much about Season 22, is that we have options. Let me tell you a quick little story just to try to validate what I'm trying to explain. So, during Season 22, I was in a game on Oasis, and there was a Toxic player on my team. Surprise, surprise, right? And he was getting upset at me because I was sucking with May. Well, here I thought May was still a good option, Option, but he told me no you want to play someone like Junkrat because he has the best damage output But then his friend out of all people said no you want to try to play Torbjorn because he has way better damage And his turret is gonna be able to hit the Genji on the enemy team a lot better And they were going back and forth and trying to decide who I should play because they couldn't agree on who was the best DPS to play at that time and I like that I didn't like that he was getting mean at me because again I'm a sensitive boy, but they couldn't concisely agree that Genji Genji, or Doomfist, or Reaper, or Soldier was the best option, even though those weren't options, but they couldn't come together to an agreement. And why couldn't they come to an agreement? Because that is how Overwatch should be. Everyone should be able to be free to play any hero that they want because that is the hero that either A, they want to play, or B, that they're best with. It only comes to a point where you have to counter the enemy team that you maybe have to switch off of the hero that you want to play. That is how I always describe Overwatch is that they have a counter for your Genji, okay, you play a Reaper. They have a fair for your Reaper, okay, then you play a Soldier. Back and forth kind of switches because versatility and flexibility wins Overwatch games. And I would also like to think that being nice can help you win Overwatch games, but hey, maybe I'm wrong there. And this season especially ran true to that statement because of the constant changes. When you look back to where we were a year from now, oh my god, it just pains me to think that it took them that long to nerf GOATs, to nerf Brigida, but now they're nerfing heroes and buffing heroes left and right that I wouldn't have even imagined because Blizzard is finally on top of changing the game. Now, I understand that there will be some people that think that they're doing the complete opposite of that, but I would like to think it's because that they're nerfing their favorite hero. I'm not going to say that you're wrong, but I mean, take a look at my favorite hero, right? Mei was the number one hero and they nerfed her so many times, but it was for the greater good for the game. I'm happy that they nerfed her. Even though it sucks for me, that means that people won't be so angry at the game because there is a hero running rampant that I'm saying, no, they shouldn't nerf her because of my biasness. But even though this was a video specifically talking about how season 22 could possibly be the best competitive season, it was mainly supposed to be talking about how competitive has evolved and gotten better, which just so happened to to involve season 22 but now we have something to look forward to at the end of season 22 going into season 23 that could make that even better than season 22 and that is open queue you know a lot of people that just don't care about the organized aspect in competitive can now just go play open queue and mess around in there while people that want an organized experience that want a 2-2 comp that don't mind waiting 10 to 20 minutes for a dps game where they just have to wait one minute for a tank game or five minutes for a support game are going to appreciate the organized aspect which means that they're going to appreciate even more teamwork and communication which could make that competitive playlist a whole lot better and then the open queue is just the place where people can have that competitive experience but still mess around which means everybody's happy 
I hope, I really, really hope that all the toxic people just go to open queue. <laughs> but Blizzard is trying to make strides to make not only competitive, but Overwatch better for everybody. They have made so many changes in the past six months that compared to last year, it just spits in the face of Blizzard from what they were doing last year. And I can only appreciate it. Now the changes that they make might not always be perfect. It might not always be something that makes people happy, but you can't make everybody happy. And watching this video, hopefully watching it in its entirety, if you disagree and you can hear me say that, yeah, it might not have made you happy, but if it's for the greater good of the game, have a little bit of appreciation for Blizzard having the balls to do that because they were probably afraid to change things last year, where here, they're not afraid at all. And there's even more good changes on the way. We have Open Queue, we have Overwatch 2 coming out, we have the fifth year of Overwatch events, which even though that wasn't part of the discussion, it's still a good thing about Overwatch. And we have experimental mode, so now that people on console can experience the changes just as soon as people on PC can and it's just a good time to be an Overwatch fan but as always let me know what you think because I'm not trying to say that you're wrong if you disagree but enlighten me teach me because here I think that we have a lot more options but maybe I'm wrong but I love you guys thank you guys for watching more watch videos to come and bye